He's Attila Ambrose. Since he was a kid, he has a habit of stealing everything that he wanted. He stole wine in the church, so he was dragged around by the priest. And it happened every day. Attila and his family always lived in poverty. To just eat, Attila had to ask his grandmother because his father was just hanging around with girls and drunk. Because of that, Attila started to learn how to survive by stealing. Knowing that his son was causing a lot of problems, Attila's father threw Attila into a military dormitory so that he wouldn't bother him anymore. Arriving at the dorm, Attila was immediately clean and shaved bald to clean up whatever virus he brought to this place. Even though Attila had been washed clean in such a way, it seemed useless because when he arrived in his room, Attila was immediately greeted with a welcoming ceremony that students in the dormitory often do. Shortly, Attila had grown up and he was one of the most talented students in the dormitory. While the four students tested, only Attila was able to hit the target correctly. This made Attila promoted to be a beacon supervisor in a prison whose job was to kill anyone who dared to escape from that place. But that night, when two prisoners escaped, Attila's guts seemed to be restrained. He felt that killing was not the right action to teach other people a lesson. He seemed to be able to feel the feelings of the prisoners who escaped, because he himself also wanted freedom. And finally, this is what happened. Seeing the cruelty of the authorities in this place, Attila felt that this is not the place for him to live. He felt that even though he was given food and work, his freedom in living his life was limited. Therefore, Attila decided to start his escape in search of freedom. Arriving at the Budapest station, Attila immediately cleaned himself. Attila stole clothes from a suitcase belonging to a man he met in the toilet. Then he changed his clothes. Attila was now free. He could feel the freedom on the outside that he had longed for. But it turned out that this freedom would be meaningless if he didn't have a place to stay and something to eat. Because of that, it seemed that Attila needed a job. Attila then sent himself to an amateur hockey club in Budapest. Since he was a kid, Attila has actually dreamed of himself becoming a professional hockey athlete. However, it seemed that Attila needed to learn to play hockey again from the start. Seeing Attila's poor performance during training, the hockey coach Boda asked Attila why he was so confident when he applied as a player in this club. Attila answered that since he was a kid, he always dreamed of becoming a professional hockey athlete. Plus, there was no other job he could do and there was no place other than this hockey club which wanted to accept him. Now, Attila had to keep making money in any way to survive and get a place to live, because only this hockey club was willing to accept him. Attila would work even harder to stay in this place. Hearing Attila's answer, Boda offered an empty apartment for Attila to live in. However, Attila had to clean this building every day in return. Attila didn't mind and thanked Boda because he felt that Boda had saved his life for now. Attila's daily life was running well. Every day he cleaned the training building, fixed the old lamps, and he also had fun with all the members of the hockey team. But one day Attila's gaze was diverted to a beautiful woman who passed in front of him. Because all his life he had only been trapped in a dormitory with his male friends. When he saw a beautiful woman, Attila immediately pursued her with enthusiasm. Attila finally got to know this woman. Her name was Kata. She was the daughter of a very rich man in Hungary. Kata then asked Attila if he had been following her since she was at the bar earlier. Even that place was quite far from this station. Attila was blushing and he just said if he wanted to get to know Kata because so far, he had never had any friends other than the men in his dormitory. Long story short, it didn't take long until Attila and Kata had their first date at a cinema. At that time, when Attila wanted to pay all of Kata's orders, it turned out that his money was not enough and Kata was forced to pay all their orders. Attila realized that his income from playing hockey was very small. But in this city, there was not a single place that accepted him to work without a passport and legal documents, apart from this hockey club. Because of that, the next morning, Attila immediately went to the immigration office to process his transfer documents. However, it was no surprise that the administration process was very complicated. Attila was required to bring five copies of each of his state documents and had them legalized by the government of his home country. Then after that, Attila also had to translate them into Hungarian. You can imagine how worried Attila was about being able to work and earn decent money. That's why Attila met Zero, his teammate, who has an uncle who works at the immigration office. Zero said that even though Attila is his friend, he doesn't know whether his uncle will make it easier for him about this matter. Plus, Zero was doubtful whether Attila had enough money as a kickback for his uncle. Hearing this with full awareness, Attila immediately borrowed money from his friend. After getting money from his friend, Attila immediately met Zero's uncle, Mickey. Here, Attila asked if Mickey helped him to process his transfer of citizenship. However, Mickey said that the money Attila had seemed like a fairly small amount if Attila won a fast process. Attila could only beg Mickey, and said that he would do anything, even if he had to be a helper in Mickey's house. Attila won't mind as long as the document process went smoothly. Seeing that Attila was serious, 
Mickey said that he would try what he could to process Attila's documents. Days have passed and now Attila is haunted by his friend who always collects his debts. Plus, there has been no further update from Mickey regarding his citizenship transfer documents. Attila couldn't be patient anymore, so he immediately went to the immigration office where Mickey works. There, Attila demanded Mickey's promises about the documents. However, Mickey asked what did Attila expect with that little money. Therefore, Mickey asked Attila never to bother him again and come to this office or Attila would be deported back to his village. Attila's confusion didn't stop there. He was even more confused when Kata asked him to meet her parents. Kata's father, who knew that Attila was only a poor hockey athlete, began to doubt their future if they're together. Then, when Kata went to the bathroom, Kata's father said to Attila that he didn't want their daughter, who was raised well and had a good academic record, to have to live in poverty forever with a man who has no future like Attila. Because of those words, Attila could only remain silent and leave with a broken heart. Now, Attila was hurt and felt empty. He realized that everyone who has money can get something they want easily. Even if it's not just one thing, maybe everything. Attila can have everything if he had money. But with his current way of life, he could only think about whether getting much money was a possibility or just a hope without certainty. And because of that despair, Attila decided that if the world dared to confront him, he had to hit back harder than before. Attila then decided to rob a bank near where he lived. Attila immediately looked for some things to support his action. He bought a black wig, a suit, and a toy gun, which became his first attributes that would help him carry out his reckless action. Without having any experience in robbery, Attila tried to remain confident by drinking a bottle of his father's favorite drink. After that, Attila's first robbery begins. Attila immediately returned to his apartment by passing a railway tunnel and took off all the robbery attributes he was wearing. When he arrived at the apartment, he was amazed with the results of his first robbery. Attila, who had lived in poverty and had never seen this much money, immediately saved it and broke an oven. So anyone who enters his apartment will never realize where he keeps all the money. After that, Attila used the money for gambling, parties, eating luxurious meals, and buying a new TV. Even though he looks crazy in using his money, Attila didn't forget that he had to pay off his debt to his friend. Later, Attila gave a bribe money to Mickey to process his immigration's documents. Because all of Attila's affairs were done, now is time for him to prove that he is not what Kata's father thinks. Attila bought a new car and picked up Kata at her campus. Attila's expression seemed to ask Kata to get back together because he's a rich man now. Not only showing off his new car, Attila also bought Kata a gold necklace which indicates whether Kata is willing to come back to Attila. That evening, they both have dinner at a luxurious restaurant. Kata looked curious and wondered from where Attila could get all his wealth in a short time. But Attila just answered that his hometown in Romania has a bearskin industry. So over the last few months, he has been continuously selling imported bear skins from his village until he has all the money. Kata was so proud to see her successful boyfriend, so she immediately gave a warm kiss, and they spent that romantic night together. However, it seemed that Attila forgot that the money from the robbery could also run out if used continuously. Attila finally decided to look for a good job and start a better life. But, no, it's impossible. Attila robbed a bank again. Now, Attila's wealth is worth billions of euros. Attila was successful in robbing more than 20 biggest banks in Hungary. But all of this didn't make Attila close his eyes. Attila also donated for the poor people, which made the name of the Whiskey Bandit popular everywhere. Apart from the fact that in every bank he robbed, Attila left whiskey aroma. At that time, many poor people in Hungary even supported Attila's actions. The headline news about the Whiskey Bandit as the benefactor became the most popular topic in Hungary at that time. The popularity of the Whiskey Bandit even led to the creation of a theater stage. And because of that, Attila looked proud of everything he did at this time. However, the lie that Attila did seem to not last long. He has to remain alert to the movements of the police who are now moving massively. Therefore, Attila didn't seem to be able to continue carrying out this mission alone. One night, Attila was invited by one of his teammates, Laszlo, at a stall. At that time, Laszlo asked how Attila got all this wealth. As a hockey player, Lazo only got a little money and sometimes the payment was late. Lazo really wanted to have a lot of money like Attila. Lazlo then said that he was willing to do anything that Attila does now. Lazlo would always be loyal to Attila. Hearing this, Attila immediately invited Lazlo to his apartment for a more serious conversation. That evening in the end, Attila revealed his true identity. He told Lazlo that he was the first person to know Attila's true identity. Therefore, if Lazlo messed up, Attila would not hesitate to make Lazlo suffer and finish him off. Laszlo, who heard that, immediately agreed and committed to Attila that he's a reliable workmate. Their first robbery finally began. However, there were road renovations in front of the bank they were targeting. Laszlo, who couldn't wait to start his first action, kept urging Attila. 
Then Attila said that it was not about which bank they're going to rob, because robbery is easy and the difficult thing is how do they get out of the bank safely afterwards. Seeing Attila think too long, Lazlo fed up and said that they're the whiskey bandit, two robbers will be a new history in this country. So, Lazlo wanted to rob the bank immediately. Unfortunately, one of the guards immediately ran and closed all access doors to the safe. Attila threatened that he would shoot the guard's head if he continued blocking access to the safe. Attila then took someone as a hostage, the manager of the bank. Attila threatened the manager if he didn't want to show the way to the safe, so Attila would finish him off. The manager chose to remain firm in his stance to close the way to the safe. He said it's better to die or live disabled rather than to betray this bank and be fired. He chooses a hard life rather than having his children and wife at home to suffer. Hearing the manager's words, Attila was touched and decided to end the robbery this time without taking a single penny. However, it seems that the construction laborers in front of the bank didn't want Attila and Laszlo to get away easily. With all means, Attila and Laszlo tried to escape from those people. At a crossing, they both decided to split up. Attila immediately stopped the car and came in, trying to escape. The police's siren voice began to be heard from behind Attila's car. A chase between Attila and the police occurred. After the tense incident, Attila went back to his apartment. Here, Kata saw Attila's body was covered with wounds. Kata had just found out that all this time Attila's money was the result of robbing banks. However, Kata still chose to be silent as she doesn't know anything that Attila has been doing all this time. Kata chooses to stay with Attila and be the most comfortable home for Attila to return to every day. The next day, Attila invited Laszlo to meet. Attila said that their target tomorrow is the biggest bank in Hungary, so Attila wanted Laszlo to agree to their new deal. Which is that when one of them is caught, the caught party will not say anything for three hours. That time is more than enough for the other party to leave this country. Therefore, once again, Attila asked that whatever happens, he wants the two of them to keep their promises and commitments to each other. The day of Hungary's biggest bank robbery has finally arrived. Attila and Laszlo started the robbery by ordering the bank security guard to lock the main door of the bank so that the police couldn't enter and arrest them. As before, their formation was still the same. Attila is in charge of robbing all the money in the safe and Laszlo watches over the hostages. After that, the sound of police sirens was heard and Laszlo immediately asked Attila to finish the robbery. But because they were having difficulty opening the door, the police deftly surrounded them both. This made Attila not have another choice. He broke the glass door using his gun. Attila and Laszlo immediately ran towards the taxi, which Laszlo previously ordered. But in the middle of their way, it turned out that news of the robbery had spread throughout the country. Therefore, every vehicle on the road was checked one by one by the police on duty. Attila and Laszlo were at their wit's end, so they chose their last option. Attila rushed to his apartment, then packed up all the things and money he had collected so far. After that, he immediately secured himself by rushing towards the state border. On the other hand, Laszlo, who was caught, was interrogated by an inspector named Dikan. Even though he was repeatedly hit, Laszlo still remembered his promise to Attila that for three hours, he shouldn't utter a single word from his mouth. However, it seemed that the inspector began to realize an oddity when Laszlo asked what time it was now. Deacon realized that it seemed Laszlo and Attila were playing a game of time. Therefore, Deacon ordered his men to take Laszlo to another room, where the wall clock inside had been accelerated five hours from now. On the other hand, Attila had arrived at the border of Hungary and Romania. There he was suddenly blocked by the officers on guard. Initially, they weren't suspicious of Attila. However, it seems that Inspector Deacon has succeeded in getting Laszlo to talk. And sure enough, one of the officers got into Attila's car. So Attila's efforts to escape ended in vain. Now the identity of the Whiskey Bandit has been revealed. Attila Ambrus, the genius robber who was able to trick the entire Hungarian police force was known to everyone, including Kata, who looked disappointed to see that her lover had to be imprisoned. Attila said that he would change. He would no longer rob for the sake of their lives. He did all of this just to prove to Kata's father that Attila was not as low as he thought. But for Kata, robbing is a lowly thing. Because by robbing and harming many people, Attila should not feel like a hero. And of course, Kata's father wouldn't be proud if Attila had a lot of money from robbing. All this is enough for Kata. And now Kata cannot continue this relationship with Attila. After that, Kata left. And at this time, Attila was very sorry. The next day, Attila was interrogated by Inspector Gekin. He asked whether Attila felt guilty after carrying out all these robberies. The inspector asks if Attila thinks 27 banks is a small number for a robbery. And the more than 500 billion euros that Attila has enjoyed is a small amount so Attila was still calm inside here. Hearing this, Attila explains that this whole rotten system is what makes him a criminal. He would never rob or harm other people if all of society's welfare was guaranteed by the state. 
He would not rob if he didn't have to think about what to eat and live in tomorrow morning. He wouldn't rob if everyone has the mindset to help each other, especially with the poor people. According to Attila, not even the inspector thought about it. The police only think about their own stomach and the satisfaction they want. Hearing that, Inspector Dickon immediately ordered his men to take Attila to the isolation room. However, it seemed that the inspector did not recognize and understand who was in front of him now. Attila Ambrus, the whiskey bandit, a genius robber who robs 27 banks in Hungary. A robber who was able to pocket more than 500 billion euros, with reckless capital and a talent for disguise. A wig and several ornaments that he always wears will become a legend and also a bad record for the police ranks in Hungary to this day. At the end of the film, it is explained that Attila was finally arrested by the police and military ranks after breaking into his 30th bank. And they don't know how many billions Attila has pocketed. But Attila's action is like the final point from a series of robberies that this genius robber has carried out throughout his life. And now we can see Attila Ambrus, who was once the most wanted fugitive and the most phenomenal criminal in Hungary. It turns out that he has repented. He is now pursuing a business selling and buying ceramics, which he studied for 12 years in prison. And the film also ended with a sweet smile from Attila, which indicates that the story of the Whiskey Bandit is over. Now Attila has a new life goal and finally he felt the freedom he had been looking for all this time.